Hi, welcome to my channel. My name's David, and in this video, I'm gonna be talking about running and running training specifically. So I'm training at the moment for High Rocks, which is a, an event that has a lot of running in it, but the training I'm gonna be talking about in this video will be suitable for 5Ks, park run, 10Ks, anything like that. I'm just specifically talking about it because I'm gonna be doing High Rocks. I'm gonna be talking about some well-known methods of training for improving your general pace at running. And so that's gonna be talking about interval training. I'm gonna be talking about long distance, steady runs, zone two training, and also middle distance runs. As you can see, I'm not really a runner. I'm a really slow runner. Over the last five, six months or so, I've been slowly building up my running. Um, I used to be able to run park in about 29 minutes, and I've got that down to about 24 and a half minutes now, so I'm slowly improving. And I'm, I'm basically building up my long distance runs as well. I used to do sort of four or five K runs, and now I'm doing sort of eight to 10. And I even did a 15 K run a couple of weeks ago. So I'm slowly building up my mileage ready for High Rocks come 19th of November. If you're thinking, what the hell's High Rocks? What's he talking about? Well, High Rocks is basically builders as the ultimate fitness test. Uh, it's an event that runs globally and they run many events now and they're building up all the time in the UK. There's probably about five or six events a year now in the UK. And basically it entails a series of runs, uh, eight altogether of one kilometer in distance, intermingled with a workout of some description. So as you can see there, there's a lot of running involved and a better way to improve your general overall time in High Rocks is to improve your running pace so that you can keep a consistent pace throughout all those eight one kilometer runs. So with High Rocks, you get a chip timer that attaches to your ankle so you get a really accurate result of exactly how long it takes you to do each one of those 1K split runs. So my pace was all over the place. I started off with a 507 and I think my slowest pace was a 702. So I'm, I'm trying basically to improve my running pace overall. So instead of it being 507 to 702, I'm sort of trying to aim for around a five minute pace and be consistent throughout. There's a website out there called Rocks Life. You know, fully recommend it. Uh, get on there and have a look at it if you're anything to do with high rocks at all. And they did an article about how to improve your pace. And, and basically they also talked about how the elite runners at High Rocks also have a very consistent pace throughout. So their pace splits for all each one of those 1K runs is very consistent with only a slight variance throughout, whereas people in my division, the open division, tend to vary all over the place, basically depending on whether they're doing the opening lap, the last lap, or one of the compromised running laps, which is one of the laps after the, the sled push, for instance, where your legs are really fatigued and your pace goes out the window. There's a couple of laps you do in high rocks which are what are called compromised runs or fatigue runs and they're basically after the sled push the burpee broad jumps and the lunges obviously each one of those events is really really going to fatigue your legs uh, you really feel that when you go out onto the run and it, it becomes a sort of a fight then to keep your pace so i'm trying to work on compromise running and that's been done as part of my program but i'm also trying to improve my general pace so i'm trying to make it so that a, a sort of a sub five minute pace is no problem whatsoever and so even when i'm fatigued i should be able to keep consistent on that so if you want to simulate that sort of compromised feel or that fatigued feel uh, of the run you can obviously do that quite easily you can get a sled push it and then follow that up with a run and do some sort of interval sessions with that, so many rounds of each, uh, where you're going straight from run, straight into a sled push, straight into a run and back to the sled push. Um, you can also do the same sort of thing with the burpees, you can do it with the wall balls, but anything that you find that that's a hard part of the High Rocks event, you can simulate that and try and do a compromise type workout where you're, you're working out the muscles and doing the run straight after that. So talking to a few people out there who do running and are better at it than I am, there seems to be a general consensus on a few ways of improving your general pace. So one of them is obviously do a lot more running. So the more running you do, the better you get at it. But there's obviously a more sort of scientific approach to that as well. So one of the things you can do is you can do longer runs and they do it, they call it say a steady zone two run. And so basically you go out, you do a run, but instead of sticking to a pace, i.e you're gonna do this run in a certain time, you do it based on your heart rate. So luckily if you've got a, something like a Garmin with a, a chest strap, which I wear, you get a very accurate um, heart rate representation as you're running along in real time. And you can tell your watch that you wanna keep below a certain heart rate, and then it will report to you uh, via audio notification. So if you've got earphones in, you get a, a sort of heart rate uh, zone reading and it'll say heart rate 2.3, which would be, you know, it's a decimal representation. You're in zone two, uh, 0.3 into it. Uh, and you, you keep your heart rate below a certain uh, pace 
and you do that for the duration of whatever distance you're going to run. So you run quite a distance, more than you would normally run, but you do it at a very slow pace. Um, it feels alien to do it at first because you don't really feel like you're working your muscles and everything like that, but all the scientific proof out there that I can find online all points to this being a really good way of building uh, your capacity to run longer distances um, under duress and to, to maintain a good pace. You can also do interval training. So interval training is basically where you can do it in different ways, but the way I've been doing it is you run a certain distance at, at, a, at a fast pace and then drop down to a recovery pace for another period of time. And, and that might be one-to-one. -one. So you might do sort of one minute fast pace, one minute jog, or it can be a distance pace. So you could run a hundred meters at a fast pace and drop down to a slower pace for hundred meters. But you get the idea, you're basically doing a section of faster pace running and a section of slower pace running um, for a period of time. And, and that is also supposed to improve your general pace as well. I've also been told that it's good to do something that pushes you a bit more. So we do parkrun as well uh, every other week. Uh, parkruns are only up down the road in a uh, local town in Exmouth on the beach. And so you get out there and, it, and because it's more competitive, it pushes you to sort of get out your comfort zone a bit more and push your pace a bit. So it's good to just sort of get an idea of where your pace is actually at. I did my three runs this week and I also did an, uh, an interval workout yesterday which entailed a lot of running as part of other exercises and program. So I've done probably four or five runs this week, which is um, a bit more than I normally do, but it's, it's good, I'm building my capacity. Um, I've done a track run this week, I've done a uh, long run this week, and I've also done a um, park run this week. So I've done all the three runs I should be doing, and I've got footage of the track run, I've got footage of the park run, I don't have any footage of the long run because there's only so much footage that you guys are going to want to watch of me running. The long run I do is along the Exmouth Estuary Path. It's a cycle path. Uh, unfortunately, it's it's nice. It, fortunately, it's nice and paved and tarmac, and it's uh, it's got some hills in it as well, so you get a bit of different terrain running. Uh, unfortunately, there's a lot of lycra-clad middle-aged guys on it. There should be an age limit on lycra pants who are trying to be the local legends on Strava. So you do have to keep your wits about you sometimes, but it's a great place. Um, you can stretch the distance out. It goes all the way to Exeter. So if you want to run 20K, you can run 20K. And no problem at all, you just do a loop there and back. So I'm a long run, as I said before, uh, it's a zone two run. So you basically tell your watch you want to keep in zone two. It'll give you audio notifications. And basically as you run along, uh, you basically ignore the pace for the speed you're actually running at and listen to what it says about the heart rate instead and maintain that heart rate or below. And so I did that. I think you have to maintain about 60 to 70% to be a zone two run and did that for, I, I'm normally doing eight to 10K. I did a 15K one a couple of weeks ago just to push it a bit to see how far I could run. And yet it's, it's, it's a pace where you're comfortable. You can actually talk at that pace as well. And, and it's good to build your capacity. For the park run and track runs, I actually got some footage for you. So we'll now head over out of this office and over to the track and park run and you'll see what I did there. Uh, morning everybody. So today we're gonna to be doing our local park run. So we're in Exmouth, so we're very lucky to have park run here at the beach. So you don't actually run on the sand. You actually start way back over there by that weird round building and you run up the coast and then we run all the way back along the coast all the way down there all the way up to the top of the coast and then back again so it's a great place to have a park run um, we're here to do sort of a mid-speed run because obviously it's a 5k uh, my daughter's PB here is 2831 and mine's I think 2423 uh, we're going to be running at her pace today so um, it's going to be a bit more about 29 minute pace for a park run we're going to be using my um, Garmin watch with Pace Pro on to try and keep her on track. The one thing we do to reward ourselves is we have a nice peanut butter and banana smoothie at a cafe just up the road called Hang Time, and that's like a mini reward and an incentive for Izzy to get a PB.
morning everybody. So today I'm off to the running track. Uh, we're right next to the running track, just over there. And basically I'm going to be going doing some intervals. Um, came up here a week or two back and did the similar sort of thing, but our coach at our gym came up as well and programmed us some nice intervals. So I'm going to do something similar to that. So that was, I think we did a couple of uh, laps, so uh, 800 meters um, of jogging and just warming up and some stretching and mobility, that sort of thing. And then once we did that, we then went off and did, I think it was the first 100 meters we did as a slow pace, uh, second 100 a bit faster, third 100 um, your 5k pace, and then jogged in and then did that, a f I think, four times. And then we did a couple of ones where it was a bit more of a, uh, a faster pace around. So I'm going to do a similar sort of thing today. Um, probably going to warm up first, do some mobility, and then once I've done that, um, get a couple of laps in and then I'm going to go and do um, I will do 100 meters at an average pace 100 meters faster 100 meters faster, and then the last 100 meters is a full sprint and then do uh, maybe a, a lap of cool down and then repeat that so many times um, so I'll see you in there So that's a couple of laps warm up done. Oh, now we're going to go and start on the breaking the lap up into 100 meter segments and just do sort of intervals where, where I'm going to be increasing my speed at every 100 meters and see how that goes on. time of the track finished for today quite enjoyed that weather's perfect for running cool and uh, not too sunny um, yeah managed to do what I what set out to do a um, bit hot now from running but uh, yeah hopefully that's going to improve my pace slowly but surely doing this a bit more and more leading up to high rocks with a uh, a middle speed sort of 5k type of run as well intermingled in and then doing a long run sort of 8 10k ish maybe more um, once a week so if I do all three of these once a week hopefully by the time I get to high rocks I can try and maintain my pace uh, throughout each one consistently and try and get a, uh, a pace of I'm around the five minute mark is what I'm aiming for, which will be a nice improvement all the way through. So if you're a regular to this channel, you'll know that this weekend was supposed to be the triathlon. For those who don't know, a triathlon is basically a workout which entails doing a 20 minute biker, a 20 minute ski, a 20 minute rower. I can't remember which way around it is, but yeah, 20 minutes, 20 minutes on each one with a couple of minutes in between each uh, piece of equipment to transition. Um, unfortunately, the venue that was holding the event uh, has now postponed it. Uh, they're trying to get hold of more equipment i believe so um once i know the, the new date for that i'll let you know but i didn't do that this weekend so i've been doing a lot of running instead my high rocks training is going really well i've been working on the program that dave from rumble fitness sent over it's been quite a tough week this week i had a workout yesterday which entailed uh i think it was 500 meter run intervals with uh two ab exercises followed by uh, toast the bar exercise and then just keep repeating that over and over again for 45 minutes so obviously building up to being longer duration workouts which I'm going to need when I get to high rocks because it's about an hour and 20 minutes hour and 20, an hour and 30 minutes long depending on how fast I'm going to be on the day there's only six weeks left now until I actually get to high rocks in London XL so I think there's only a four four weeks of that is actual proper solid training because the last very last week is a taper week so real easing off just 
mobility movement and not really training hard. And I think the week before that is also tapering slightly as well. So it's only four weeks of solid work. And I believe not this week, but the next week is also a deload week. So that tails back a little bit as well to let you recover. But it's all been going well. I'm making sure I'm getting all of the, the points that uh, Dave's got in the program. I'm doing a lot of recovery and rehab and mobility to try and make sure I don't get injured because obviously at my age, that's the primary concern is you can put all this training, put all the time in, but if you get injured, it can lay you out for a, a week or two or even longer. So I don't want to do that. So I'm making sure I do all those and ticking all those boxes. So the training's going well, the rehab and recovery's going well, sleep, not so good. Um, nutrition is okay. I've just got to stop doing all of the late night biscuit binges, but other than that, it's going okay. So if you are interested in Hyrox and I piqued your interest, then watch those videos down there. Uh, I've got a load of videos on Hyrox on the channel. So if you're interested, have a look at those. If you know of any other ways of running faster, then please leave a comment down below and let me know. That'd be great for me. If you haven't already done so, then please get down below and subscribe. Uh, so you get the notification of any new videos I release. And, and if you like this video, then get down below and smash the like button.